good evening friends in continuation uh, to the last video wherein we spoke about uh, liquidity ratio and we spoke about current ratio asset test ratio we spoke about uh, inventory turnover ratio debt cost turnover ratio and credit cost turnover ratio let's continue with the other set of ratios okay now the next set of ratios are leverage and capital structure ratios the next set of ratios are leverage which is also called as capital structure ratios now what do you mean by capital structure ratio in simple terminology in simple terminology it is nothing but measuring debt to equity in simple terminology it is nothing but measuring the long term debt to equity share capital of the company okay it is nothing but debt capital debt to equity ratio long term debt to equity that is equity share capital now as we have already seen in the previous uh, uh, videos leverage or capital structure ratios which is also called as salvage ratio speaks about or gives inference or understanding about the company's ability to pay the principal loan which they have taken and in addition to that one it will also analyze in help in understanding whether the company is in a position to pay the interest incurred or accrued on the capital on the debt capital or the loan taken from the bank or uh, money taken from debentures so on and so forth okay so leverage uh, or capital structure ratio or solvency ratio are primarily divided into many parts there are many ways of understanding these ratios but the prominent ones which i am going to discuss with you are debt equity ratio interest coverage ratio dividend ratio dividend coverage ratio and some other parts i will give more emphasis on emphasis on or priority on debt equity ratio interest coverage ratio and dividend coverage ratio this speaks volumes about the capital structure ratio or the solvency position of the company next one so let's look at the debt equity ratio debt equity ratio measures the ratio of long term debt to shareholders equity now this is very important so many companies are there there are n number of companies which are listed on the stock market there are n number of private limited companies and their primary source of uh, capital is equity share capital and debt capital please remember uh, private uh, private limited companies uh, private companies are uh, not covered in this uh, uh, here but we largely spoke or uh, we we have our relation as far as discussion is concerned to uh, uh, public limited companies or companies which are listed on the stock market because these are the companies which issue, uh, which raises or issue sh equity share capital okay so debt equity ratio is nothing but the ratio of long term debt see the word is long term debt there are two types of debt long term debt and short term debt when i am talking about short term debt this is current ratio so please please keep that aside long term debt is the debt which is in the form of bank loan which the bank uh, 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 rent, uh, uh, lends for 10 year, 20 years 30 years 40 years 50 years like that okay and we, this is compared with the sh uh, shareholders equity now shareholders equity is owners equity or equity shareholders capital plus reserves and surplus now what is the importance of this ratio see please remember if there is a huge amount of debt on the balance sheet if there is a huge amount of the liability side of balance sheet means the company is burdened with lot of debt and on that to service that debt constantly and continuously they have to pay interest they have to service the principal repayment as well as the interest and it becomes a huge burden for the company so you should avoid those companies where the debt is very high and you should concentrate and uh, 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 pay attention to those companies where the equity share capital is very uh, uh, good in comparison with the debt capital now total debt is again divided into two parts uh, three parts sorry long term debt short term debt and other current liabilities but here i will emphasize to consider only long term debt now what is the importance still if the debt, uh, debt equity ratio is very high now when is it very high when the debt is very high in comparison with the equity share capital means what the owner's own fund is very less in compared to the lend, uh, the loans which they they have taken it from the uh, outsiders like bankers 
financial institutions, uh, 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 debenture holders, uh, bond holders, and fixed deposit. If the debt is very high, and the debt equity ratio, the resultant debt equity ratio is very high, then the owners are putting up relatively less money in their company, and this is a very dangerous situation. They can eventually sometimes tell that we are not interested in running the business because financially it is not viable. So it is endangering the de uh, the debt capital of the company. It is endangering or uh, uh, it is uh, putting to danger some financial institutions, bankers, debenture holders, and so on and so forth. Now, it, in, on the contrary, if I am talking about a company whose debt, debt equity ratio is very less, it means what the equity share capital in in relation to debt is very high, and that's the reason why the the equity shareholders of the company or the owners of the company or the promoters of the company are very much interested in running the business. They are having so much of stake in the business that they don't want to lose control over the business, and they are they they are inclined. They have the propensity to run the business. Uh, accurately and with all means and sources. Next one. Now let's take a small example here. With that, you will understand what we are talking about. Now look at the company. There are seven, six companies in our discussion: Company A, Company B, Company C, D, E, and F. Now I have given the equity share capital of this company is ten crores in all the cases. Now look at the debt capital because debt is the uh, the area where we are emphasizing because we are talking about debt equity ratio. The first company in the uh, in the illustration is a company A, which is having a uh, debt of only or near one crore. B is having five crores. C is having ten crores. D is having twenty crores, so on and so forth. And the last company, which is F company, is having hundred crores. So please remember, on this hundred crores per annum, they have to pay interest plus. They have to keep on paying the principal repayment from time to time as agreed or as determined. Now let's calculate the debt equity ratio. The debt equity ratio is in the first case, the equity is 10 and the debt is 1. That is 1 crore by 10 crores. 1 crore by 10 crores is 0.1. In the second case, it is 5 by 10.5. In the third case, it is 1. And in the third, uh, fourth case, it is 2. 2 is to 1. In the, in the uh, fifth case, that is E company. 50 by 10 is 5 is to 1 and in the last case 100 by 10 that is 10 is to 1. Now in the last case uh, 10 is to 1, when I am talking about 10 is to 1 it means that for every 1, one rupee of insider capital that is owner's capital or uh, equity share capital there is a amount of 10 rupees as a debt capital which is very very high. It is a very leveraged company we call it. It is a company which is having huge amount of debt and then you have to pay a huge amount of interest and that is going to eat away the profitability of the company in comparison to the those companies which are not taking uh, which is which are having uh, limited or zero debt companies now let's rank them the company with the lowest debt in comparison with the uh, um, uh, with the equity share capital and when the debt equity ratio is 0 0.1 is ranked 1 so company a is 1 rank 1 company 2 is rank 2 and the last company is the worst company which is having huge amount of debt in comparison with the equity share capital which is and press 6 or the last rank we call it so it's see it's a, a fundamental uh, to see that the debt capital should be minimal so as to reduce the debt uh, the interest burden on the company because interest is is a cost and the cost is going to eat away the profitability of the company once the profitability of the company is eroded then in the in such cases the company will not be in a position to pay the dividend so generally uh, investors avoid this kind of companies where there is a huge amount of debt because the interest burden is high and eventually it damages the company's uh, position as far as paying the uh, dividend is concerned. Dividend is what we are interested in as a owner. Next one. Now there are other forms of debt, cap debt to equity ratio. I will just skip this uh, ratio because debt, debt to equity ratio is the most important parameter or a parameter to understand how the company's solvency position is. Next one. Now, next one is, now we have debt to capital, total assets ratio. The next uh, solvency ratios are uh, uh, capital structure ratios are proprietary ratio and capital gearing ratio. In this, I will talk about proprietary ratio and capital gearing ratio and I will give you a proper illustration to, uh, to comprehensively understand uh, what you mean by a proprietary ratio and capital gearing ratio. Now, proprietary ratio is uh, the uh, ratio uh, from where we come to know we can understand the extent to which assets are financed by the owner's fund. 
the assets are financed by the owners fund who are the owners equity share capital or the equity share capital are the owners of the company now this how much of the total assets of the company are financed by the owners fund for example i, I will just give a small example in the in this you will understand it supposing that i am i want to purchase a 50 lakh rupees bungalow or a apartment i have only 20 lakhs with me and the remaining 30 lakhs i am taking it from bank so i am purchasing an asset of 50 lakh rupees my own funds are only 20 lakhs and the bank is giving 30 lakhs means what i am financing the assets to the extent of only 20 lakhs that is the proprietary ratio proprietary ratio is nothing but proprietary funds by total assets into 100 we will see uh, uh, the meaning the uh, the in depth analysis of the proprietary ratio in the next slide where i am going to give you some numerical illustration next one is capital gearing ratio this is also very very important the solvency ratio this is uh, where we talk about the relationship between equity share capital and on the on the first part we have equity share capital and reserves and surplus and we correlate or have a we match a relation we have a relationship with equity share capital and reserves and surplus with fixed income bearing funds what are these fixed income bearing funds these are headaches these are headaches these are headaches what do you mean by headaches preference share capital is a headache because on this preference share capital you have, you have to pay a committed preference share dividend every year next one is another fixed income bearing fund is debentures the debentures are the are the instruments where you have to pay fixed rate of interest every year so it is a headache next one is bank loan if you have taken a loan from the bank these are fixed income bearing funds or fixed expenses bearing funds you have to pay interest irrespective of whether you make a profit or not next one is uh, your bonds if you have uh, taken if the company has taken money in the form of uh, capital in the form of uh, bonds you have to pay interest on these funds so in the capital structure there are equity share capital and preference share uh, or, uh, equity share capital and reserves and surplus which are okay whereas other sources of funds or capital capital are preference share capital or debt capital or debenture capital or uh, you know, uh, bank loans on which you have to pay fixed rate of in, uh, preference share capital or interest as and when you are supposed to pay now let's have a small illustration which will, which will help you to understand it now look at this company there are two companies in our uh, example company a and company b now company a uh, i am having the liabilities company b also i am having liabilities so let's a and b let's see the liability side of a and liability uh, asset side of a now on the liability side of a equity share capital of a is 100 crores the debt capital is 150 crores sorry 50 crores the total capital of a is 150 crores okay i have shown the arrow now the total company's assets of a are 150 okay the i repeat i will repeat once again this is very important company a has a equity share capital of 100 crores and debt capital of 50 crores i'm talking about preparatory fund ratio now 150 crores is the total assets of company a now out of this 150 crores of total assets 100 crores are financed by the shareholders of the company means 100 out of 150 crores of total assets 100 crores belong to the equity shareholders of the company and the remaining belong to the debt capital or the debenture holders or the lenders of the lenders of the bank lenders now look at company b the company b if you look carefully the equity share capital is mere 25 lakhs the debt capital is 125 lakhs so assets are eventually 150 lakhs now out of this 150 lakhs of total assets of company b only 25 lakhs are financed by equity share capital the remaining 25 125 lakhs are financed by the debt capital so so this is not a proper uh, situation this is a very critical situation this is a very precarious situation the first company is very good because out of 150 crores of total assets 100 crores belong to the equity shareholders in the second case where 150 crores are the total assets of the company a mere 25 crores belong to the equity shareholders of the company because they are financed to the extent of only 25 crores by the equity shareholders next one so next one is 
capital gearing ratio as i have already told the formula for this one is fixed charges bearing securities by equity shareholders fund capital gearing ratio is another form of solvency ratio like debt equity ratio and the debt to total assets ratio to and we spoke about just now property ratio in the same way we talk about capital gearing ratio capital gearing ratio are fixed charges bearing instruments or securities on which which are called as headaches i will call it in my language because you have you have to pay a committed uh, cost to it by equity shareholders fund these are the funds which are uh, the owners fund now obviously the numerator should be less and the denominator should be more the outsiders fund should be less and the insider fund should be high next let's have a small illustration to understand it now look at the uh, first example we are uh, taking a small problem on capital gearing ratio and let's talk about company a now if you look at the company a capital structure only look at only the company a the equity share capital in this case is 600 crores preference capital is zero debt capital is zero debentures are zero bonds are zero fixed deposits are zero and other fixed liabilities are zero means they have no obligation to pay preference dividend to pay interest on debentures to pay interest on bonds to pay interest on fixed deposits and other things so fixed char uh, charges bearing instruments are zero and equity share capital is 600 so if you calculate capital gearing ratio it is 0 by 600 so the company is a very good company because the outer outside uh, the instruments which are having uh, fixed charges are zero now look at the second case the second case is somewhat um, now become critical for company b in comparison with company a so here half of the share capital out of 600 crores belongs to the equity share capital 50 crores 50 crores 50 crores 50 crores and 100 crores belong to preference share capital debentures bonds fixed deposits etc now please remember 50 crores ke upar unko 20% preference dividend pay karna padega on 50 crores of b company debentures hold uh, have to be paid in the form of interest to the extent of 22 crores irrespective of whether you make interest or not you have to pay in the uh, bonds case uh, in the b company 50 crores is taken in the form of bonds on which you have to pay 25% rate of interest every year so these are all headaches to the company so headaches are 300 crores and the equity share capital is 300 crores so 300 by 300 is 1 is to 1 so somewhat not uh, good uh, very bad in comparison with company a let's come to company c d and e so we will see company uh, c with this we will understand company c is having a equity share capital of 200 crores and the remaining 400 crores are financed by preference share capital and debentures and on which they have to pay preference share capital you have to pay 20% to preference share dividend preference dividend for the and debentures you have to pay 22% interest so so the obligations are 400 crores and the internal capital or internal uh, insider fund is 200 crores so 400 by 200 is 2 is to 1 so the situation in comparison with a is worse and for uh, company c now look at company e company e equity share capital is only 50 crores and the remaining final crore final 50 crores belong to preference share capital debentures bonds fixed deposits and other liabilities on which you have to pay committed interest and preference dividend so the ratio is 550 by 50 is 11 is to 1 so the company is very bad situation because the fixed obligation instruments are high in, very very high in comparison with uh, uh, equity share capital or equity shareholder fund so this is the way you can understand the solvency position of the company it's very very important next one now another form of understanding the solvency position of the company is interest coverage ratio and dividend coverage ratio there are two other solvency ratios which are considered to be very very important from a investor's point of view which are interest coverage ratio and dividend coverage ratio their formulas are there in front of you interest coverage ratio is given by the formula ebit by interest okay we will see with the illustration numerical illustration what do you mean by this now interest coverage ratio tells about the ability of the company to pay interest how strong is the company how financially the company is strong how uh, financially the company is robust to pay its interest on debt capital that is the capital taken from, uh, in the form of loan from banks from financial institutions borrowing from financial institution debenture holders Fixed deposit, etc., etc. 
So if the company's uh, interest coverage ratio is good, that company is good. As the company is very bad, okay. So in EBIT is nothing but earnings. So the earnings should be high and the interest should be low. Then only the interest coverage ratio will be good. Okay. Next one is dividend coverage ratio. Dividend coverage ratio is nothing but the, see we are raising capital. We are taking capital in the form of preference dividend. On this preference dividend, you have to pay. Sorry, preference share capital. We are raising capital from preference share capital. On this preference share capital, you have to pay preference dividend. So preference dividend you have to pay. Then you have to earn subsequent uh, adequate amount of capital uh, interest. Sorry, profit to pay preference dividend. So dividend coverage ratio, or this is also called as preference dividend coverage ratio, speaks volumes about the ability of the company to pay preference dividend on preference share capital. It talks about the ability of the company, the financial strength of the company, as well as the ability of the company to pay preference dividend on preference share capital. The formula for this one is earnings after tax by preference dividend. Dividend coverage ratio is given by the formula earnings after tax from by preference dividend. Before I go into the next slide, I will give you a small example. For example, if uh, Mr. X is there, he is having one lakh rupees as a his salary. One lakh rupees is his salary, and his rent is rupees, and he is paying a month. His and uh, his monthly salary is one lakh rupees, and his monthly rent is five thousand rupees. Now, is he in a strong position to pay uh, the rent? Yes, because he can pay twenty times from his salary. Twenty times he can pay. Now, let's consider another example. One person is earning one lakh rupees, and his monthly rent is ten thousand rupees. Now, is he strong? Yes, he is very strong. He can pay ten. But in comparison to the previous one, little bit not okay. Now another example: if one a person is earning one lakh rupees salary and his uh, uh, his uh, uh, rent is twenty five thousand, is he strong to pay? Yes, he can. He is in a reliably uh, comfortable position to pay. It is four times he can pay. But in comparison to B and A, it's not quite good. Another example: salary is one lakh rupees, but the interest uh, sorry uh, uh, salary is. Uh, is one lakh rupees and the rent he has to pay is fifty thousand rupees. Is he in a position to pay? Yes, he is in a position to pay two is to one. But in comparison with the uh, uh, previous ones, he is not in a comfortable position. So in the same way, we can uh, we can demonstrate our understanding about interest coverage ratio and dividend coverage ratio. Let's go to the next slide. We will understand. Now, see, I have given you a under uh, um, the flow of. Uh, income statement of a company okay just we i will read it out so, uh, first we have sales from that we have to deduct cost of goods sold from you will get gross profit as you can see in the slide we just concentrate on company a the sales are 600 crores the cost of goods are, sold are 100 crores so the gross profit is 500 crores less other expenses less, like office overheads administration overheads selling and distribution overheads are 50 crores. So this is called as EBITD. EBITD is called as earnings before interest tax and depreciation. Means profit you have earned, but you have to still pay interest, you have to pay tax, and you have to show depreciation expenditure. So this amount is 450 crores. Now from here I will deduct 50 crores uh, de depreciation on uh, all the machinery, and the amount is 400 crores, which is called as EBIT. EBIT is also called as earnings before interest and tax. Means what? Profit before interest and tax because you have to still pay your interest as well as tax. Means the profit is still to be uh, still to be deducted. Uh, from that profit, you have to deduct interest and, uh, and tax. So EBIT is 400 crores. This is very, very, very popular uh, figure. Uh, this is a popular name called as operating profit. This is used in stock market in capital markets. If the company's operating property is increasing, it's good. Else, it is very bad. So EBIT is up operating profit. The operating profit of this company is 400 crores. Now look at the interest on the. This is please remember. This is a small example for demonstration purpose. This is not uh, a company's example. I'm just taking a small example. Now the interest what they have to pay is 400 crores. Now how much? So. What is interest coverage ratio? Interest coverage ratio, as I told you, it is the ratio of earnings operating profit by interest. So here, four, I have uh, deliberately marked blue and red. So 400 crores divided by 400 crores is one. Means your ability is only to the extent of one. 
if you look at the company B, uh, B the operating profit is 400 crores and the interest on debt is 200 crores. So you can pay twice. Your interest is 200 crores, but your profit is 400 crores. You, your ability is two times. So you can pay twice the uh, amount you have to pay. In the company C, the profit is earnings uh, before interest and taxes is 400 crores. That is the operating profit is 400 crores and your, your interest payment on loan capital or debt capital is 100 crores. So how many times you can pay? You can pay four times. So it's very, very strong. Now look at the third case, fourth case, sorry. Fourth case, the earnings, uh, earnings before interest and ta uh, uh, tax uh, or operating profit is 400 crores and the interest on what you have to pay is 50 crores. So you can pay eight times. So this company is very solid. Means you have to pay 50 crores, but I have earned 400 crores. I can pay eight times. In the last case, the company's E, the earnings before interest, that is the operating profit is 400 crores and the interest payment is only 20 crores. Now they can pay to the extent of 20 times. So very, very formidable company. So this is the way you can find out the interest coverage ratio. Okay. This is the way you, have to, you can find out uh, interest coverage ratio. So I have calculated underneath this one, interest coverage ratio, the first case is one, the second case is two, in the third case it is four, in the fourth case it is eight times, and in the last case it is 20 times. The highest, higher the num number, best is the company, better is the company. The company's formidable position illustrates in the form of interest coverage ratio. Okay, uh, the other calculations, you can just disregard it, discard it for our understanding. Now let's understand the next ratio uh, for, uh, as I already told, preference dividend coverage ratio. Preference dividend coverage ratio, as I already told, it speaks about the ability of the company to pay preference dividend to the preference shareholders because they have taken money from the preference shareholder capital or preference shareholders and they have promised to pay preference dividend. Now let's go to the example. Company A, company A sales is 600 crores, gross profit is 500 crores, earnings before interest and uh, interest tax and depreciation is 450 crores and operating profit is 400 crores interest is 400 crores and the profit is earnings before tax is zero tax is zero because there is no profit no tax earnings after tax is zero because there is no no tax uh, no profit here now they have to pay 40 crores as dividend preference dividend their earnings are how much the earnings after tax is only for uh, the formula for preference share. Preference dividend coverage ratio is earnings after tax by preference dividend. Now the earnings are zero. The earnings after tax is zero. But how much they have to pay? 40 crores they have to pay. So the company is not in a position to pay. So it is zero. Now let's come to the third, uh, sorry, the second company, B company. The earnings after tax. If you look at the earnings after tax, it is 160 crores. Look at the bottom. 160 crores of B. How much they have to pay preference dividend? 30 crores. So they are on 160 crores. Can you pay 30 crores? Yes, I'm in a position to pay 30 crores, which is five times. I can pay five times. Now let's come to the uh, third situation, company C. The earnings after tax in this case, look at the bottom, it is 240 crores. Earnings after tax is 240 crores. And preference dividend, how much they have to pay? 20 crores. Can they pay it? Yes. They can pay. They can pay how many times? 12 times. 20 crores pay karna hai. Or profit kitna hai? 240 crores. How many times they can pay it? They can pay it 12 times. Now last case, uh, sorry, uh, third, fourth case. The earnings after tax. If you look at the uh, 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 look at the bottom, it is 280 crores. And what is the preference dividend they have to pay? It is only 10 crores, mere 10 crores. So 280 crores may say 10 crores pay karna hai. So how many times it can pay? It can pay 28 times. Very, very solid company. Now look at the last case. 304 crores they have to, they have, they have earned, they have earned 304 crores and they have to pay mere 5 crores towards preference dividend. How many times they can pay? They can pay nearly 61 times. So the preference dividend coverage ratio in the first case is zero. Second case it is five. In the third case it is 12 times. In the third, fourth case it is 28 times. And in the last case, it is 61 times approximately. So the company is in a very strong position as far as E is concerned. And EA is in a very delicate position because they are not able to honor the payment as far as preference dividend is concerned. With this, I will stop and we'll join once again and I will come out with a new video with a new set of ratios. Thank you very much.
ಎಂಟು ಮೀಟಿಂಗ್ ಆಗ್ತದೆ 